Hi, welcome to the Data Tech. So today we are going to discuss about what is an ABI. So this is a software engineering playlist and in this episode we are going to discuss what is API. So before we get into API, right, I just wanted to show you a traditional example of what API is. When you Google it, right, what is API, you will get an example of uh, a restaurant, waiter, customer, chef, something like that. So this is a traditional example. So I also wanted to go with the same so that it will be an easy way to understand for you. Now imagine there is here you have a two picture and here we have customers and they are giving some instructions to the waiter. Imagine you know some dish and that is your favorite but you forget the dish name but you know what are all the ingredients will be there. So you are just explaining to the waiter that I forgot the dish name but these are all the ingredients will be there. So when you say this the waiter will say oh yeah sir I know what is the dish you are saying. So they will tell you the dish name. All right now this waiter straight away goes to the chef and she will explain to the chef like what this has to be get prepared. Now the chef is going to prepare you the dish for you. Now here if you see we have a customer and here the waiter gets all the information and she goes to the chef. So here this waiter is an API. So you don't know what is the hidden implementation. So because you don't know how the process of the food is going to be get prepared. Only the chef knows right and you are not going directly to the chef. Right. Instead, you are going via this waiter. Now, she is the API. So you can ask me, why can't I go directly to the chef and explain? And that will create a lot of uh, complexity. Imagine if that is a small shop, it's a roadside small shop, then it is fine. You can directly go. So in the same way, imagine you are building a very small application and the end users are very less. Only two people in your team or only two end users are going to use that particular code. Then here, the customer directly can go to the chef and then they can talk to them like a small shop roadside shop so we will not have any waiter so now imagine i'm going to give you an example and the types of api and we are going to pick one type of api today and i'll be explaining it end to end now here we understood what an api is and why we are not connecting directly right to the chef same thing i'm going to explain now so we have types of api so these are all the types of APIs, so REST API, SOAP, GraphQL, RPC and library based API and open API. And today we are going to discuss about library based API. So once this is done and I'll be showing you in the next episode what is REST API that is also very very important. Now let's just discuss about library based API. So now I showed you the types of API. Now just before getting into the actual topic I just wanted to show you one small example. Now imagine there is two developers in the team Gautam and then Kumar okay there are two developers Gautam have developed a method called addition and that gets two arguments from the user a and b and you are writing a formula a plus b and returns c so now whenever like you invoke this add method and pass two numbers the summation will happen and you will be getting the output right now Kumar from your team is also trying to implement one such logic addition and he is also ready to start writing the code and by the time Gautam stops Kumar and say hey I already implemented this add logic just use my logic. Now Kumar is saying okay Gautam then give me your complete code. Now Gautam says no you don't need a complete code just invoke my method only in your code. Okay, so now what Kumar says, okay, Kumar is invoking this method from Gautam's code and then he is passing the value and he will be getting the output. Now Kumar doesn't know what is happening inside, right? So here what you have given is an API. So we used to call it as method calling, right? So you are using a method and that is what we used to call it as an API. You are just created a library. So that's why we call this as a library API. Now imagine only two members in your team. So in that case you can even pass the whole logic to your friend and he can again reuse the code. But the thing is imagine you have 100 plus users and all these 100 plus users want to rewrite the same logic what you have written. In that case why should they have to rewrite? They just call your method because you are giving that as an API right and that is where the difference comes. Why I am not directly connected to the chef? Because it's a very big restaurant and so many users are there. Each and every user cannot go to the kitchen and ask the chef to do all the stuff, right? Then it's a overload. It is a very roadside shop and there is like very few customers. Directly you can give an order to the chef, but it is a big restaurant. So many user requests are going to come, right? So that is why I just explained to you this. So here you are just giving the add function to the entire team and they are using it. And how about the end user perspective? Now imagine 
you build a calculator application when you click the plus symbol internally this addition logic will be get executed now your mom or dad is using your calculator app when they click plus symbol in the calculator app they will never come to know what is happening inside because your code is hidden and they are using your functionality so here we are securing our code and we call that as an encapsulation and just we are asking them to use our method and that's it now let me show you the code for the same now I just have a code, simple API. What I have done here is I just created a class. I just created an empty list and then I'm creating an add book method and I'm collecting all the values from the user. I'm just creating a set ID title author and I'm passing the necessary arguments also in my method. I'm defined it. Now I'm just invoking self.book.append. Append is a function that comes from the list and I'm passing this new book, the set of values what I get from the user. Now I'm just returning the book. Now I'm just written in another method get book by ID. That means when you give an ID, I will iterate the list and I will get you the details for that particular ID. Okay. So if book ID equal to equal to ID return book and I have written this into a for loop just for the iteration purpose. Now I just created an object for this class inside my main and then I'm invoking my class bookstore.add book and I'm passing all the five arguments whatever required for that particular method. There is five arguments you can see here. Right. So now I am adding two book and I'm just printing get book by ID. That means with the title, I just need only the title of my first record. That is this one. You will be getting the great gates by as a output. Now let me run this code. You are getting the output. So here you are just using your own method in your, your own class. Now imagine Kumar is asking for your code and you are not giving the code. Instead, you are giving a method which has the functionality. Now this is a second class lib underscore book which was written by Kumar. Now you what you are doing is you are just simply importing the simple API file Python file and you are importing the class bookstore which is Gautam's class. Now you create now Kumar is creating a library manager class and he's just initiating a bookstore and then now def add book to store. So this is a method written by Kumar to implement an add book logic. But you can see there is no such add book logic here. But we have the logic in Gautam's class. You can see here this piece is not there. So instead what Kumar is doing within his method, he is just invoking bookstore dot add book. So bookstore is nothing but the class which I created. And here this add book is coming from my class, this one, right? So now I'm just returning that new book, which has my add book method, which has Gautam's add book method. And I'm just passing all the arguments also here. Now I just create that is Kumar is creating a main and he's creating a class for the bookstore. And then here manager equal to library manager is his class and to his class he is passing this bookstore object name and which internally comes here and here. Okay. Now I'm just creating manager dot add bookstore, which I'm invoking my method that is Kumar is invoking his own method and passing the values and then he is printing get book by ID. So this method is also from Gautam's class that Kumar is reusing this to print. That's it. So now when I run this code, I'll be getting the same output. See the great gets by. It is just got added and it is just printing. So here I've just created an API. So this is very important before you try to understand what is REST API. Okay. So the video agenda is over. And if you really like this video, please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues. Thanks for watching.